For a long time, Web3 has been the most popular library to interact with the Ethereum blockchain. But another library, Ethers.js, is catching up quickly. Compared to Web3, it has a couple of advantages, such as a much smaller size, which makes your front-end load way faster, no compile dependencies, which were causing some issue to some Windows users for Web3, written it's ta in TypeScript, which is becoming more and more in demand for high-end front-end positions, and a better structured API. So if you're a beginner and you don't know Web3 yet, you should learn Web3 first, for example, with my series on Web3. But if you already know Web3, you should absolutely learn Ethers.js as well. In this video, I'm going to introduce Ethers.js and I'm going to show you how to connect to the blockchain, how to read data from a smart contract and how to send transactions. And if you don't know me, I'm Julian and on my channel Eat the Blocks, I teach blockchain development. My next course on DeFi programming is going to be released soon. If you want to be notified when it comes out and receive exclusive preview, sign up with the link down below. Okay, so I've already prepared a Truffle project with a smart contract and a short script that show you how to use ethers.js. So I'm gonna walk you through the code. So here, this is a really standard Truffle project with a smart contract that is very simple. Uh, we just have a variable and a function to change the value of this variable. And I've also already installed ethers in the project with npm install ethers and i've also created a script where we're going to use ethers so let's open this up so the first step is to import ethers from the ethers library then we are going to import the contract artifact of truffle to get the address of the smart contract so here i'm doing the demo from a node.js script but if you use ethers in the front end this is slightly different you have to use this syntax so here first thing i grab the address of my smart contract from the contract artifact of truffle so here for this value here this depends on which network you deploy your smart contract in this case we're just going to use ganache but for example if you use mainnet this is going to be one here and next we're going to instantiate a ethers provider the provider represent a connection to the ethereum blockchain so this is similar to the concept of provider of web3 so there are different kind of providers. So here we use what we call a JSON RPC provider and we have to pass the URL. So here, this is the URL to Ganache. So you need to use this provider when you want to connect directly to an Ethereum node. And there are also other kind of providers. So for example, Web3 provider, this is if you want to connect to MetaMask in the front end. If you want to connect to Mainnet, you're going to use this method get default provider. So it's going to return what we call a fallback provider. And this is actually quite sophisticated. So behind the hood it's going to connect to a couple of Ethereum APIs such as Infra, Alchemy API, and a couple of others. And every time you send a request, it's going to compare the result of these different API and make sure that they return the same result. And you notice that you don't need to pass any API keys. So it uses a couple of default accounts that are managed by the maintainer of Ethers.js. These accounts are used by all the users of the Ethers.js library. So sometimes they reach the maximum usage limit and they start to be throttled. That's why sometimes when you use Ethers.js with this provider, you see some weird error message like fail to reach quorum or too many requests. So for development, you can use a get default provider like this, but for production, it's recommended to use your own API key. So in this case, the syntax is very similar, but here you pass an object and for the different Ethereum provider, you pass API key, for example, infra, infra, key alchemy alchemy key etc and you can find the full list of ethereum api that are used by etherjs on their documentation so next if you don't want to connect to mainnet but you want to connect to a public testnet like kovan then you can also customize here the arguments actually this is wrong uh this is not like this but 
this is like this if you want to connect to Kovan for example or Rob Stern uh, etc and if you don't want to use this sophisticated system where the provider uses several Ethereum APIs, you just want to use one of them like Infra or Alchemy, you can use another kind of provider specific to each Ethereum API like this. Okay, so next we're going to read the data of a smart contract. So I scroll down here and I wrap everything in an async function because inside I'm going to use the await notation to send a network request. So first, before we interact with the smart contract, we need to define the ABI. So the ABI define the Solidity interface of your smart contract. So in Web3, the only way to grab the ABI is by using the JSON ABI like this, which is very difficult to read and to manipulate. But with Ethers, you can define your ABI as a JavaScript array where each element is a string. So this is very readable. So this is actually one of the main advantage of Ethers compared to Web3. So below, we are going to define a contract object with Ethers. So we pass the contract address, the ABI, and the provider object that we created before. And with this object, we'll be able to read data from our smart contract. So here, contrary to Web3, you don't need to prefix your methods by the methods namespace here, you can call your methods directly. So here we haven't defined a data function in our smart contract, but we do have a public variable called data. So Solidity automatically creates a getter function with the same name for public variable. And so here we send this request to Ethereum and we get the value as a response. And here this value is an instance of the big number library. So this is a JavaScript library to deal with very big numbers that are so big that JavaScript cannot deal with them. So big number is this is different from bn.js, which is used in Web3. Same function, but different library. And so after, if you want to transform this uh, big number object to a string, then we use the to string function. Okay, so we know how to read data from the blockchain. So next, I'm going to show you how we can send a transaction. So to set a transaction in Ethers, we need to use a kind of object called a signer. And so we can get a signer from a provider or we can also instantiate a signer on its own, for example, with the wallet API, but I'm not going to cover this in this video. So this separation between provider and signer, this is unique to Ethers. In Web3, this is actually merged into the same concept. So once you have your signer, you can send a transaction with the send transaction method. And so here you specify the parameter of your transaction. So the recipient and how much ether you send. So here this is in way. So we send 1000 way to this address. And with this notation, you can also send a transaction to a smart contract by using the data field, but it's not very convenient. It's easier to use a contract object. So below, we are going to instantiate a contract object with a contract address ABI, but this time for the last argument, we don't provide a provider, but we provide a signer. So the contract object that we have here is different from the contract object we got before. Here with this contract object, we can only read data because we instantiate it with a provider. But this one, we instantiate it with a signer. So we can actually not only read data, but also send transaction. So below, we are going to execute the set data function. And here we pass the argument to this function and we get a transaction response object. So at this point, the transaction has not been mined yet. It was just sent to the network and we need to execute another function to wait for the transaction to be mined. So we execute the wait method on the transaction response object. And finally, when we get the transaction received, it means that the transaction was mined. 
So again, this is better than Web3. So in Web3, you just have a way of sending a transaction, but then you have to use another API if you want to wait for the receipt. But in the case of Ethers, this is a little bit easier to do. And last thing, I wanted to show you a couple of utilities function of Ethers. So first of all, format and pass Ether. So, so this is to manipulate way value. So here, format Ether, you would use this when you get an Ether value from the blockchain and you want to display this to the users. For example, here we want to display 1000 way in terms of Ether. So this is going to be a very small amount of Ether. And here, this is the other way around. Let's say that you get an input box in your UI and the user uh, put a value, for example, of 1.2 Ether and you want to send this value to your smart contract, so you need to convert this to way. So here we're going to convert 1.2 Ether to way, so it's going to be a very, very big value. And below format and pass units, this is very similar to format Ether and pass Ether, except that you can customize the number of decimals. So this is very useful for tokens where the numbers of decimal is not always 18. So that's a good first introduction to Ethers.js. And if you want to get even better with Ethers.js, you need more practice. I have another video where we do a more advanced project with Ethers.js. So go watch this video if you want to keep learning Ethers.js. I'll see you there.